This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Justin Strong and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strong. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, and he was ready to call CPS after this episode, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I'm shocked to say this, but a bone sticking out of an arm might look worse in cartoon version. Yeah, it was pretty grisly. <laughs> I mean, it was I mean, like hanging on by a thread there for yeah, a little bit. I was like, oh, gosh. Terrible. I was like, wow, like Joe Thosman's injury didn't look this bad. No, it didn't. No, like I said, it looked like it was just kind of like hanging on by like a, the, yeah. the smallest little thread of a, of a human skin possible. So uh, we'll definitely be talking about that and we'll be talking about some other things. So if Jordan, uh, we, uh, ew, I'm kind of all over the place today. If you've been listening to the podcast since we started a few years ago, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoy it as we talk about the second season finale of Invincible titled I Thought You Were Stronger on Prime Video. If you are new or a regular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the main attraction podcast go to patreon.com slash the main attraction podcast and you can get patreon only content you can support us at a three five ten or twenty dollar level and when you join up we'll shout you out here on the show if you want ad free access to podcast any level of being a patreon supporter will get to the show ad free and if you can't be a patron you can help the show out by rating us on spotify and a podcast and we would love it if you left us a five-star rating while you're there on Apple Podcast, uh, you could also write us a review. Uh, you could help us out in that way. There's lots of ways in which you could help out, even if you can't be a patron. Uh, we'd love to get the reviews and we'd love to get the ratings because, like I said, both of those things do a lot to get the show into the ears of new listeners. If you'd like to interact with the show, you can do so. Send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to hear any thoughts or questions you might have. So send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. All right, quick reminder, we are doing things on YouTube. Uh, the TikTok is probably going to be holding up because right now I have a pinched nerve and it like sends pain down through my my right arm whenever I hold my phone in a certain uh, certain angle. So uh, that's oh. probably going to be put on the on the back burner for quite a while. Uh, so like I said, I will try to get back to that at some point. But uh, apparently I have to like go to physical therapy and all that fun stuff. So, oh, no. uh, yeah, so like I said, that's going to be put on the back burner because holding my phone in a certain angle, even like when I'm like working on the computer, or even like right now, it starts to hurt, and I'm have to like remember I can't hold my arm in a certain way. So, uh, pinch nerve is not you're fun. Falling apart, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was kind of funny. The the doctor when I went and saw him yesterday, uh, he's like, Did, "Have you done anything like thrown uh, a ball or anything?" Or something? like, "No, I haven't done anything like that." And he goes, "Have you done any like strenuous physical activity?" I was like, "No, I need to, but I haven't." And he's like, "Have you had any stress?" I'm like, "Yeah, I've had some stress." <laughs> so uh, he's like, "Okay, well, that's probably it." So yeah, uh, but yeah, so pinch nerves, not fun. Don't recommend. All right. Uh, well, like I said, we are discussing the final finale of Invincible Season 2. Uh, your general thoughts on this, because I've, I've got some thoughts about it. I'm just curious what your thoughts were. The word of the day is disjointed. This, I thought this, that, too. I'm, 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 go ahead and talk about that. I thought that, too, at first, but when I thought about it, I don't think it quite was. But go ahead. I thought this episode was disjointed. I thought this season was disjointed. I just don't know what they were going for. Um, you know, why bring Angstrom back and then he takes up half the episode dealing with him and then you get rid of him? You kill him that quick? Like, what was the point of that? Um, I don't, you know, we add new characters towards the middle that we right. get no explanation about. I don't know who those are, those characters. Yeah. Are. I know. Now, I those know people, were, yeah, those people were the most confusing parts of that to me, but go ahead. Yeah, and then, like, uh, you know, we barely got, like, Amber, Eve, the rest of the Guardians that we have have been such a big part. No Donald this week, you know, right. a, a big part of what um, what, what was a big part of the season. I just, you know, I, I, I also, when we were bringing in, like, the multiverse, I actually said, you know, I trust these writers that they're going to do it the right way and that we'll enjoy it. You know, I think they wasted it. It felt like yeah. as wasted as The Flash. Well, and the, here's the thing. So my general thoughts, I kind of thought the same thing at fir first when I first started watching it. When I first got done watching this, I kind of had similar thoughts to you. I was like, wow, that was a weird finale. Uh, I, like, it was incredibly entertaining. There was no question was, about that. It was. It was incredibly entertaining. But when I got done with it, I was like, 
that's weird. Why did we do Engstrom at this point? Why did we do all this? And then the more I got to thinking about it, I was like, what was the point of this entire season? And I went back and looked at it, and I was looking at our Patreon page. Uh, I was doing some stuff on it. And when I was looking at it, I came across uh, our Invincible uh collection because i have whenever we cover multiple episodes of the show i try to do collections on patreon and when i was looking at that i saw the poster for the first part of invincible season one so the first four episodes the first four episodes the first that first poster was it was a picture of mark uh i guess he was on another planet or whatever i can i couldn't tell exactly tell where he was but he had like this pool of blood beneath him in the pool of blood it was there's a reflection not of him there's a reflection of nolan omni man and i remembered like that's when i kind of went back and remembered what they were setting up in the first season when the first part of the season well i think they were still setting up but you just forget about because we and I hate to harp on this as much as we do, but uh, we've harped on it a lot. But you forget what they were doing in that first part of the season. And when you get to this second part of the season, four months later, you're like, you're not going to make the connection, I think. And I think that's where this gets lost because I think it actually worked really well when I remembered the whole point of this season, like the biggest theme they have going throughout the course of the second season is Mark doesn't want to be his father. That's what he well, doesn't want. And bringing in Engstrom at this point, he serves a purpose because Engstrom hates him. I mean, right. Engstrom absolutely hates him because he has the entire collective of all Engstroms across the entire multiverse. They have, he has their entire, he has their entire consciousness inside of him after that accident that happened back in episode one. And, we forget about this because, like I said, I was thinking a lot of the same things you were like, well, they've wasted kind of the multiverse thing. Now, the, the, the whole purpose of this was never to do a multiverse. The whole purpose of introducing this multiverse concept at the beginning was to show why Engstrom hates Mark, why he's going after him as much as he does. Because, in, as he said, in basically every other reality, not all, but pretty much every other reality, Mark joins up with his father to take over the planet and to yeah. to help usher in the Viltrumites. And this is what, because, because Angstrom hates him so much, he's going to any length possible that he can to hurt Mark. And the way he does it is by going after his mom and going after his newfound brother. And this is how he's wanting to inflict the pain because he is brutal to those two people. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah throughout sure. the course of this thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think what... The, by for, by separating it into two parts and we're having three to four months in between the two, because this episode, we're, we're talking about it on March 29th. It's going to air on April 4th. The very first episode was like the very beginning of November. So we're talking yeah, about five yeah. months between the two. Right. It's a long time. The whole point of this entire season has been Mark doesn't want to be his father. Yeah. And... Uh, I think also what they started to do there in episode three and episode four, because it's been so long, it's hard to remember this. They wanted us also to remember, yes, his father was a horrible person, but there is a part of Mark that's okay to be like his father because we see his father is starting to pick up, be more like Mark and yeah. how the two are kind of combining. So what we have for, what they are doing, I think, is basically using Engstrom here in this finale to show, yeah, he's a little bit like his dad. That's yeah. the end. That I think gets lost because when they bring him in here in episode eight, we've forgotten what happened back in episode one. Right, right. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to harp on it as much as we do, but because there is such a huge gap in this thing, I think people are going to be yeah. just like you were and just like I was at first until I went back and looked at it a little bit more. Like, what is the what was the point of bringing him in here in episode eight? Why did we do this right. now? Because it feels like two, two completely different seasons. I mean, even yeah. the stuff with Amber, the stuff that he's been going through with Amber, this made a whole more, lot more sense when I was thinking about it. Because he's talking to his mom the entire time when he's going through all this stuff with, with, with Amber. He's trying not to be like his dad in that regards, too, because his mom yeah. has talked about, I didn't feel like, I felt like I was alone. I felt like I was right. never had somebody with me because no one was always off saving the world, doing something else. And Mark is trying not to let his – not be his dad, not only as a superhero and eventually turn into this horrible villain, but he doesn't want to be his dad as well in regards to Amber because he doesn't want to leave her alone. He doesn't want to do anything that might 
make it their relationship difficult. Like so, when I looked at it more as what has this season been trying to do as a whole, it made more sense. But I, like I said, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to come through because there was such a huge gap. And I think the average right. viewer who's going to be watching this, they're not going to be thinking back to episode one. Maybe they will for a brief moment when they ha- kind of have that little flashback to episode one when he says, no way could I have helped you. Why would I have helped you? Because that's what Ingram right. actually did. He tried to yeah. save Mark. Yeah. I don't know if people are going to remember all of the details of that. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I could be wrong. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, everything you said is right. I mean, like, you're right. As I remember, this was the whole thing. And they were, you know, you think about it. They're, they were trying to show that Mark was as strong as Nolan. Right. But, like, and he had the temptations that Nolan had. But he's right. trying to be different. And you're right. Really, when you look back on the Amber stuff from last episode, he was trying to be different than, right. uh, than Nolan was. I got to ask this. This is something we bring up all the time when we're doing these streaming shows. Would this have been a better binge altogether? I say yes. Yeah, and I get why they didn't. Uh, I get why they didn't because the first one, the first season was so incredibly popular. It was not a binge. Uh, It was done weekly. Uh, They did the standard Prime Video, the standard Prime Video release on this thing. Uh, It was three episodes, and they did the final five week to week. It was absolutely a huge hit for them. So I understand them. Yeah. Not wanting to go back because uh, trying to capitalize on that same uh, on that same feeling, basically going in from season one to season two. Let's do the same thing. The problem yeah. is, like I said, they they have the split now. Their official the official reasoning for the split in the season was they didn't want to have this go into the holiday season when they didn't think people would be watching as much TV. I tend to think it's more of what I heard other people talking about. They didn't have the entire thing ready, but it was already. An incredibly like if they had yeah. waited until the entire thing was ready, it would have been three years from the start of season when season one first aired until right. they air season two. And it's just an incredibly long time. It's I mean, long time. I know in the age of streaming television, because things budgets are bigger, production value is much bigger. You 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 can't really push out a new season every single year on the same on the same date every single year. That's very rare to do. There are some shows that can do it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the Bears is doing it, but yeah. it's a lot easier to make the Bear when, you, you know, your sets are pretty much the same. You don't have to, like, create brand new stuff all the time. Whereas, you know, with animation, these this type of a show, you have to, like, completely draw everything. So I get that, but... It's still it's a long time, so they they they've got to figure this out. I don't know, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. I think that's still there's no excuse. There's shows. No, I don't think there is either. There, there, three years is way too long. It is, and that's what I was getting to. It's it's too Especially long. For there's eight episodes. Right, and Stephen Yoon apparently has talked about this. Is they understand going into season three, they can't do this again. That they've got to figure out a way to get yeah. season three out sooner. You know. 18 months and really need these to kind of be like the max that yeah, you go from season true. one to a season two in any mm-hmm. show for the most part. I mean, yeah, I uh, whenever you start having close to two years, it starts getting really hard to keep an audience. Uh, like I said, cause there's a few shows we're going to cover later on this year. I mean, we, we got one coming up with, uh, without a range that it's been a little over two years since it released. Yeah. Uh, and part of that was they weren't really sure if they were going to, to do a second season. So that's part yeah. of the reason why right. they waited as long, but, yeah, that was it's Amazon's hard. fault, and then the strike happened. Then the strike happened. So, and the strike. Look, let's just be honest. It has it's muddied the waters on a lot of oh, stuff because yeah. we probably we probably getting a lot of other stuff a lot sooner than what we actually yeah. did because of both the writer and the uh, actor strike. So it, it has yeah. muddied the waters on this thing. So, like I said, I, I think it's. I, you know, when I went back and looked at it, I really appreciated this season a lot more. I went back, I appreciated the finale a lot more. The problem is, I don't know that people are going to be that thoughtful or that mindful about it when yeah. they actually end up watching this show. Uh, and that I is wasn't. an issue. <laughs> uh, and it, look, it makes sense. I mean, like I said, I wasn't at first either. If I right. hadn't seen the poster, if I hadn't just happened to glance at that poster uh, for the first part of season one, I, I probably would not have been so either. So yeah. this is an issue. Uh, I think they have kind of fumbled the bag and just in how really, I don't think right. they fumbled the bag in terms of the quality yeah, or in terms of the that. story. Yeah. I just think they fumbled the bag in terms of how they released this and got it out to the public in general. Yeah. And that's going to be the biggest issue. Also, I just like Sterling K Brown is such a great actor and a great voice. Right. I just feel like the way they used him, they could have found a better part for him. 
<laughs> yeah, they might could have. I mean, that's 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 a possibility. Uh, I've never seen him do voiceover stuff, so I don't know if this is like the first time they. He just really wanted to, and he really wanted to like get into a villain because I know most yeah. of the time he plays he plays likable yeah. characters, right. and this is not a likable character to say the least no, for him. No, no, no. Uh, but this, like I said, so I'm, it makes me wonder if that was part of it for him. Yeah. Is he just wanted to? He really wanted to play just an absolutely awful awful villain in this thing and yeah. he, he really was like i said so uh i tell and, you what uh, i will say uh disney marvel if you're listening he would make a good kang yeah he could uh there's there's no question but they i the rumors about kang are that they're going to get uh oh crap i forgot to get, who's thinking about getting to that oh well that's that's for another time another place yeah. but yeah there is somebody else that they have kind of uh they're thinking about for that but we'll get that uh, later on on another podcast so uh I tell you what let's go ahead and take a break and let's go ahead and talk about like the specifics of this episode all right so let's get into like the real nitty gritty on these things. Uh, basically, the episode seven ended with Ingram Levy calling Mark from his mom's phone and basically telling him, you, you you need to come home now. Uh, and when Mark gets there, we have basically this. I don't know. It's probably lasted like 20, 25 minutes. Oh, this yeah, entire thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a lo- It was a long sequence where Mark and Angstrom are going at each other. Uh, it was. I thought it was incredibly. Look, it was incredibly entertaining to watch because mm-hmm. Angstrom. We have. If you want to talk about failures in terms of the show, this part of it, I th- where I think is where they did screw up because. After that episode, first episode, we've seen Ingstrom Levi a few times throughout yeah. the course of the episode. Usually, but we the, don't really the, uh, the end credit scene. Yeah, basically that's where we saw him was in all yeah. the end credit scenes after that first episode, and so we don't really have a, a feel for who he is as a character. Right. And now they're reintroducing us. Where they're reintroducing him, and he's awful. I mean, he is. Yeah. He is throwing Oliver around like he's a rag doll. Yeah. Uh, he ended up like breaking uh, his mom's arm off, basically, oh, which we talked yeah. about there at the very beginning. And like I said, I think that is a mistake in terms of like bringing him back in. But also thinking about what we talked about previously, I do believe that he's just a tool for are you going to become like your father and just right. killing somebody become more like your father. What are your, just your entire thoughts on yeah. this entire sequence? I thought it was, I thought it was fun. I know there had to be Easter eggs because some of the people that I know one of them's Batman, but like, uh, <laughs> but like, I don't, I didn't recognize the other people he was running. Um, into. Yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you did or no, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm sure, not familiar I'm with the source material. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming those were great Easter eggs for people, but it was still fun, even if you didn't right. know who it was. And there were, you know, interesting battles and how he would keep coming back and forth. Right. So yeah, I did enjoy it. It was long though. I, I will say. Yeah, that. it was. Uh, so that that was a little surprising, but the threat. I was waiting on Oliver to end up having to save the day because we. I was kind of waiting that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We talked about that last episode because uh, you made a couple of predictions and a couple of them were right. Uh, and that was one of them, and I, I, I thought we were going to get that. And it never happened, though, but I, w- I was a little surprised with that. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for that, too, because they kept going to Oliver, and like I was like, mm-hmm. he kept calling for Mama, and I was like, is he going to eventually, is he about to do something to when take over? When he threw the knife, I thought Oliver was going to grab it. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, too. I thought, I thought something was going to happen when he threw that knife, and obviously it was just to make Mark move so that he didn't go into a portal. So, um I thought, like I said, it was incredibly entertaining. I thought it was also incredibly interesting because he, every time he went to a different dimension, he had no idea what right. was happening where he was. And, you know, Debbie and Oliver were, you know, panicked as well because they don't know where he is. They don't know if he's coming back. Uh, you know, it was and also gets, interesting how the people recognized him. And a lot of times it was like, right. oh, no, he's back. Yeah, exactly. And I love the Spider-Man comp. The guy who was playing the, like yeah. the, the the similar Spider-Man. He's like, yeah. look, I know who I, I I know you're from another dimension. I've seen the portals that we've done this a lot before. Yeah. And look, yeah, yeah. and Mark is like, well, how do I know you're the good guy? And this old guy you're finding is not the bad guy. And like I said, they do incorporate a lot of humor throughout this very intense 
sequence that we have. So I thought yeah, that was actually yeah. pretty good because you I mentioned the so Batman good. thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a you're dressed like a bat, but you're a man, and you, you yeah. know the name's a little too on the nose. They never actually come out and say it, but I thought that was, I thought that was just really well done. But we get into some, to, like I said, we get into some interesting stuff because, you know, Angstrom obviously has a lot of trauma. He has a lot of turmoil, and he has, yeah. like I said, he has the consciousness of every other version of him. Because when that accident happened in episode one, they all died. All the other versions of him died, but like because he was hooked up to that machine that had was like had all their minds connected together, they all basically fell into his own brain and. So he's dealing with like he knows like the reality of every other reality that exists, which, right. you know, I give them a lot of credit because at the beginning of this thing, you know, it was hard to it, it was difficult to try to show how that would actually look. But I thought with that machine they had and all that type of stuff, it really did a really good job of it, even though mm-hmm. it may not have been perfect. I thought it it did a good enough job of showing just how vast this multiverse is supposed to be. So and he's got all that in his head. So that's always playing in his head. It's every version of Mark that has ever existed, killing people that he knows, killing people that he loves. And so now he's directing all of his hate and anger towards this one version of, of Mark that doesn't do all those things. Uh, and like I said, it made for a compelling, it made for a compelling watch, even if it wasn't making a whole lot of sense at the time. At least I thought so. Yeah. No, I thought the same thing. Yeah. It, compelling is definitely the way to describe that. Uh, and then basically, I don't remember exactly what the details on that. I only, unfortunately, I only got a chance to watch this once. Yeah, uh, I try to watch. I try to watch them twice when we do screeners because we don't have the recaps to go back and you know kind of check my notes I, and stuff I have on. To say though, I think if you'd have watched this a second time, the 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 fight with Angstrom would have you would have been bored. You would have gotten bored. With it. Yeah, because it, it would have kept going on and kept going yeah. on and kept going. And I think you're probably correct about that. Um, but watching it, you know, when I was watching it the first time. Uh, I don't remember exactly how Mark eventually got the upper hand in in, in the fight, but he eventually did. Well, he but when uh, he, he fakes, he can see that uh, he saw the portal, and he kind of hid, and then Angstrom stuck his head out, and then he grabbed him. Okay, him. okay. I'm glad you remember because I like said I couldn't remember. So he finally gets the upper hand, and when he does finally get the upper hand in the battle, you know he just starts pummeling him. And yeah. one of the things, that, and this is when the physical fight starts because he Angstrom actually can hold his own a little bit against Mark because mm-hmm. everything he's gone to all these other realities and all these other doctors have like operated on him to make him a better, make him stronger. Where it, the title of this thing comes from, and so Mark thinks he's going to be able to handle his punches. Well, it gets to a point where he can't, and he gets end up getting mm-hmm. he kills Angstrom him in this dimension that is barren it's like no one is there uh and he's dealing with this grief he's saying i thought you were stronger and this is where he's dealing with this i killed somebody i i have never wanted to kill anybody before am i like my dad and like i said this is when yeah. when i went back and thought about the entire season i was like okay well this is what the entire season was supposed to be about right, it's about right. him if he is like his dad if trying not to be like his dad and we'll talk more about this when we talk about Nolan, but I think that they also want us to realize that there's a part of his father that's, but as strong as Mark is, he also is st- stronger than, than he thinks he is because he's obviously is affecting Nolan as well. Because Nolan, there's a good bit of, of Mark now that we see now in Nolan. So, uh, it's really interesting because, you know, it's not just, you know, he killed somebody to, to get what he wanted, but, you know, what is it, what is it that will make Mark go beyond what he would have ever done in the previously what what is it what is it that you know will snap this snap this type of behavior this type of violence into him and it's the threat of his mother it's the threat of his family whereas nolan was when he did this in season one it was i need to complete my mission even if that means killing my own son so like i said they're they're making some really good they're making some really good comparisons i'm just afraid nobody's gonna remember it that's just my fear for him exactly yeah. Uh, but what were your, your thoughts when Mark was stranded on this place? What were your thoughts? Uh, man, I was like, wow. And, and, you know, just him in his mind dealing with it, thinking like I've screwed up. I've cost my family, you know, I'm stuck here now. I'm never getting out of here. Right. And just dealing with all that guilt and emotion. It, I mean, that was a, that was a really good scene. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, he doesn't know how long he doesn't know what time is working. Like apparently time is moving faster, slower there. Excuse me. He's work. Yeah. Well, moving slower there because eventually the guardians do show up. They, they come through a portal and it's been, I think they said 20 years since uh, Mark how, had yeah. disappeared. 
So it's been 20 years since Mark had disappeared, and they're all older. Uh, Eve is obviously older. Rudy has turned into, has grown into the full version of, yeah. of um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dixie Man Dukas' character. What oh, is his uh, name? Rex. Rex, yeah. He's turned into, because I had for, I actually forgotten that Rudy was actually, he used like the genetic makeup of, of Rex to make his clone because oh, that's that was. right. Yeah, that was he was supposed to be. He, he just saw that you know the the opposite sex a, appealed to yeah. to Rex, so he felt like that's what he needed to look like. So, and I had forgotten about that. That's the reason why Rudy looked like him and yeah. talked like him at, at at this point. But um, she also but Eve drops this this like bombshell on on Mark at this point, like you know I love you or it's, it's weird because she's yeah. talking to Mark. She's like she loves you. Like the version of me has been in love with you ever since you left. What were your thoughts when they finally did this? Because we, like, we've talked about this potential romance in the past, yeah, but what were your thoughts? We've talked about it. It was kind of hinted last episode because yeah. the last two episodes, Amber, I mean, I'm sorry, Eve, when she's been around Mark, you could tell there's sparks or whatever. Right. I was surprised she said that. And I was surprised we really, well, I guess Eve and Mark had a scene later on, but it did, it didn't, Mark didn't say anything Right. Or do anything after that knowledge. I guess that will be something that he thinks about maybe in season three. Yeah, I'm guessing that's something that they'll, they'll explore a little bit more in season three. My thoughts on it, I've always thought that Eve and Mark make a better pair just because right. they're both superheroes. They're both superpowered. Yeah, yeah. They both understand yeah. each other better. Right. And well, I guess we'll talk about. Let's go ahead. And let's, let's go ahead and kind of skip ahead a little bit here, and we'll come back to some of the other stuff. So eventually, Mark, when he does get back to his own reality, he goes and he has this talk with Eve, and they're on this. I guess it was a bridge is where they were when they were discussing this. And Mark, it looks like he's getting ready to talk to her. I don't. I wasn't sure if he was going to like say "I love you too" or I couldn't tell. Like I said I, I could not tell. I, so I wasn't really sure what road they were going down with that. And then he stops and he's like, yeah, nothing. It wasn't that big of a deal anyway. I guess you're right. I think you're right. I think they're going to explore this more in season two, but do you, in season three. So, so is this theme? Cause I, we don't really get much of anything from Amber this episode, if I remember correctly. Yeah. He goes to Amber's college and he sees Amber. And, and yeah, she looks back over her shoulder. Yeah. 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 That's all we got. I mean, what are your, how are they going? How are they going to handle this in season three? Do you think? I, I I feel like we're going to see Eve and Mark get together. Yeah, I kind of think that too, but I also kind of think that I don't know that he's going to give up on Amber just yet. I, cause it I feels don't know like, either. And it feels remember, like that's the easy way to go is go to Eve, but I don't know. Eve has no friends but right. Amber, and Amber, about her only friend is Eve. So right. there is that as well. There's that complication of it too. So like I said, I really don't know how they're going to go. Young love, and, Eve, young love. Yes, I know. It's it's always complicated, to say the least. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how they're going to handle that either. I'll, I'll we will be very interested to see what they do within season three whenever it does roll around. Hopefully, and, not mean, in three years. <laughs> yes. Well, also we need Amber back. So, like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and I, like I said, I, we talked about this at the end. We talked about episode seven. Even though I do believe that they they might be done, I don't think they're going to get rid of Zazie Beats. Yeah, I think her character still has more to do. So. Uh, so when he gets back to his own reality, they're dealing with the plot of everything. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about uh, that this one made this part of it made no sense. You have these two women and like they just switched to this this yeah. part of the story pretty abruptly where these two women are in Egypt. And I had completely forgotten this from season one. I don't remember this part of season one at all. Were when they the, in his, season one? The, the dad that that the guy who was killed by the the zombie or whatever it was that they uh, found that was in season one yes I have that no part of it. that I know that's who what, the voices are of the two girls who are they because I didn't recognize it them really there were Raleigh which is Chloe Bennett from Agents of Shield okay and then and then Jane who's Ella Panero Ella Pinnell Purcell from uh Yellow oh Jackets. okay. Okay, those are actually two pretty because Chloe yeah. Bennett is like if she plays the character of Quake on Agents of Shield, yeah, who was yeah. like the main so, character of that yeah, thing. So, yeah. So obviously they're going to do something with this. Uh, it's Purnell, not Purcell. I don't know why I was. Yeah, per- L. Purnell, uh, yeah. which is a big deal, and she's yeah. L. Purnell is getting ready to be in Fallout as well. That's so right. she she's going to be the main star of it, but. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't realize who those were, and they kind of cut away from it pretty abruptly too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this part of it I don't get. Like I said, I remember they, showed, I, they made sure to show that was it a scorpion. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. They made sure to show that, so that has to have some meaning. That I don't it has know to have about. some meaning. It, this is the weakest part of this because I don't know yeah. why it's included. Like I said, I re- when well, they showed, been, you know, uh, pun, no pun intended. It should have been the stinger. Yeah, that you're you're correct. It should have been the stinger instead of what it actually was. But uh, when they showed at the beginning, like the previously on segment, and they showed the, the zombie guy in that previously on, I was like. I don't remember that. I don't remember yeah. that at all. And then they went back to it, and the zombie guy shows up like, "Hey, I'm supposed to like possess a, a male body," and like that's kind of yeah. where it ends. I was like, "Yeah, this is all we're doing with this. Where, where, where are we going right. with this thing?" And I, I have no clue. Like I said, this is to me, this is the weakest part really of the entire season because yeah, I don't yeah. know why they stuck it here at this point without really expounding upon it or doing anything with it for that most part. Yeah. So, uh. But basically, at this point, Cecil is trying his best also to convince Mark that he is not like his father. The good right. guys won. The bad guys died. The good guys won. Uh, yeah, you killed somebody, but it, you know it's not that you did they what you had it. to do. Right. Yeah. And this is kind of gets in that whole thing. You know, he doesn't want to kill somebody. Obviously, that's something because that's a, to him that makes him more like his dad. Right. Uh, and I. I think it's I don't I don't know necessarily it's this fact just the fact that he killed someone it's just that he let that anger take over him the way that it mm-hmm. did and that has to be scary for somebody who is you know invincible literally but going by the right. name uh, yeah. and, and is way stronger than anybody else on the planet uh, and it's it's the thing that everybody fears is that he'd be like his father so he's dealing with all this like I said it really worked when I thought about it, it just didn't work oh, yeah. when I was watching it initially so. Uh, yeah. It's a really interesting concept. And like, if you look at it on IMDb on the episode eight, uh, if you get like the episode eight page for this, there's a really great picture of like Mark in a cape and it's really dark. It's a really dark picture of him. Like, so just that whole, I, it reaffirms what, I'm, what I was thinking was they're really trying to play up this. Is he like his father after all? And uh, speaking of his father, let's go ahead and talk about him because Alan makes his play. This- he, yeah, he, he ends up getting taken on purpose so that he can try to work with Nolan because Nolan ends up, as according to Mark, uh, he's basically kind of like seeing the error of his ways and is going away from it, is trying to go away from the Viltrumites. And basically Nolan is – is he's okay with dying. What were your thoughts about Nolan in this episode? Uh, yeah, I, I thought this was great. It was yeah, – we talked about the last episode how – this season had been missing Nolan, and so we got right. a decent amount of them. This we got a decent so amount. That of them, yeah. was really good, and I'm very, very excited about a Nolan Allen uh, hookup. You know, yeah. <laughs> on multiple episodes of them working together. So I'm very excited about that. And then Nolan showing, like you talked about, some humanity, and then in fact saying he missed his wife. Right now, granted, that's the way. Like that's the way the that, entire season ends. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't say which wife, though. Well, true. I think he was talking about. I'm pretty sure he was talking about Debbie. I, I would think. I think so too, but he didn't say it. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to say I miss my wife and like be the one that's. Well, I guess right. technically she's not right. dead. Most I guess, but dead. yeah, yeah. Well, she said she was going to be dead soon, but well, last way, yeah, like, she wasn't going to last very long. <laughs> the, fact, the fact that we're getting Nolan and Alan together that that's exciting. Yeah, it is. I don't understand the Viltrum the Viltrumite way. Like they say, he has to be right. healthy for them to execute him, and then they go about beating him up again. Like is he I now? Know. Is he is he not healthy anymore? What? How does this whole thing work yeah. in this entire thing? So, uh, but yeah, this is part of it. That I, like I said, when Nolan is there, when J.K. Simmons is providing his voice to this entire thing, it it works so incredibly well. And yeah. like I said, him and Seth Rogen, Alan doing what they were doing, if. I was just kept waiting for this to happen because at the time I was thinking this is what the show was building towards. But like right. I said, I, I, I was completely off base on what the, the show was going for. But um, like I said, I'm really excited about what yeah. they're going to do. I, I thought this was how the season, I thought the like the raid on Earth from the Village Rides would be how the season ended. It's not. It, like I said, this is all about becoming yeah. if it, Mark was supposed to be like Nolan. But also these are the parts where I thought this is where they're trying to say. Yes, Nolan did horrible things to Earth. He killed thousands of people in the attack on Chicago in the, at the end of, episode, of season one. Uh, 
and now they're trying to to redeem. Can he be redeemed though in the viewers' eyes? What are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. I don't know. It, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's a tough it sell. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's it. It's a great question. I really don't. Yeah, know. I, I don't know. I don't know how well people are going to be responsive to that. Obviously, they've yeah. been setting it up since he showed up in episode four, or technically episode three, yeah. but. Uh, they've been setting it up for a while, so I'll be really interested to see how that plays out. Uh, one thing I've really skipped over, I don't want to skip over it. Duplicate. He's actually I, alive and well. What were I, your thoughts I, I on wrote, that? I wrote that down. I was like, Justin is going to be annoyed because we I was about very this. annoyed. Yes. There's no consequences in this show. Yeah, I was really, really annoyed by that. Look, I was happy to see Duplicate there. She's a great character. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm, I was happy back about with, that. Back with her uh, love, uh, immortal. So that's nice. Right. And it was a nice scene. Don't get me wrong. It yeah. was it was really actually a beautiful scene between the two of them because, you know, immortal voiced by Ross Marquand, he's got his moorings back at this point, so he can be a, an effective leader again. So I like that. I like that part of it. But as we talked about in the last episode, everyone who died in that in that scene in episode six, uh, or who we thought died, uh, Rex, Shrinking Ray, and now Duplicate, they all end up surviving. At least right. we assume Shrinking Ray is going to survive. It looks like she's going to end up being okay. Yeah. They talk, even talk about that at one point. And uh, it, there, there aren't consequences. It's like it's like I, yeah. we were talking about last week. She died, and it was an emotional death, and it was done yeah. so beautifully with the funeral the and funeral everything and, else. And how upset Immortal was. And that part of it's just, we really don't like that much. Yeah, exactly. Now all that's just done away with. And right. look, I thought they handled it well, but I don't know. How, if nobody dies in this thing, somebody has to die because they go through some like incredibly impossible like moments and circumstances right. and nobody ever really suffers anything from it. Like I said, I, I, it's fine. I get why they did it. It it makes sense. But I just think it's I thought it was cheap. It's yeah. really, really cheap. The fact they did that. So. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we do our season awards? Uh, I think we're ready for the awards. Yeah, I think we are too. Let's do some season awards. All right. Here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we wrap up a season of a television show, we give out six uh, season awards to the actors who portray these characters, all based on the six characters of Friends. Up first, we have the Rachel, who is the star of the show. Who are you giving your Rachel to? So I'm going Mark. Uh, Stephen Yoon, and then I'm adding Debbie here. We've talked about before, uh, you know, played by Sandra, uh, that she mm -hmm. was such a huge part and, and one of the better parts. So I'm putting them as the Rachel. Okay, uh, I just went with Mark uh, Stephen Yoon. I, I went with him as my as my Rachel. But I can understand why you put uh, Debbie in this one as well. I gotta get my cast and crew back up. I lost them for some reason. All right, uh, next on the list is the uh, the Joey, the character who's just one you just loved, somebody you just enjoyed watching. Who is your Joey for this? So I put uh, Eve, voiced by Gilly. Gillian Jacobs, and Amber by Zozy Beats. Uh, and those are mine. Yeah. Yeah, those are the well. characters you like the most. I mean, they're just fun. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they definitely are fun characters. I enjoy them a lot. So, but yeah, they're they're mine as well. Yeah. Uh, next, the the Chandler, the character who makes you laugh the most. Who, I would be shocked if we don't with? have the same ones. Uh, Rex, by, <laughs> yes, by Jason <laughs> and Alan, and Alan, Seth, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I mean, look if. If those two are the, who are there basically to make you laugh, if, if they're if they're not making you laugh, then you're doing you just right. kind of miss the whole Something's boat there at that you. point. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, they're mine as well. Uh, next is the Phoebe, the oddball of the bunch. Who's your Phoebe? I went with two people, and they work together. I went with Donald and Cecil. Okay, I like that. I I actually threw Oliver in here just because he's the purple baby. You can uh, you can do Oliver because you know, we've <laughs> talked about Cecil a lot. That like. They kind of always make it look like Cecil could be a bad guy, but he's really not. Right, you're uh, correct. And, and, you know, he's in Donald is an oddball, and so is Oliver. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we talked about that with Cecil too when we, when we discussed this a, a few episodes ago. You know, he's not a bad guy. He does some bad things because. Right. Uh, he's so much another character that we're going to talk about uh, when we talk about three body problem. He reminds me a lot of Wade and in, in, in that yeah, particular I show. You know, he's just going to do whatever it takes to save the world, even if people's feelings get hurt, right. if they don't like if it like even if it causes some other people pain, 
it's just what has to be done. He's just going to do it. So, uh, like I said, I can, I'm, I'm kind of down with that. So, uh, next is the Rachel, the, not the Rachel, uh, the Monica, the person who just has the, an interesting role in the story. Who are you giving your Monica to? I went with, uh, Nolan here. Okay. I went with Nolan and Debbie at this, uh, yeah. at this point. So I went with both of them. Uh, last but not least is the, uh, the Ross, the person who like you like the least. Who's your Ross? I know we have talked about this a lot. I'm going to have to do it again. The split in the seasons is the Ross. It was the worst part that's a of good, the season. Yeah, that, that's actually a good call. I ended up going with Engstrom just because when you're throwing a baby around yeah. like he was, I was like, you're, you're pretty easy yeah. day. But, yeah, you're, you, you make a good point. The, the worst part of this entire thing was the split in the season. So I do wonder if they would do that again if uh, – how they would handle a situation like they get into with that. I, I don't know. Cause like I said, they, they're never, they don't do it because uh, there was a lot of complaints about it for sure. And like, surely they listen to like the ringer and other, right. you know, like comic book uh, podcasts, you know, of course the main attraction as well. Right. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm sure they come yeah, to us. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. But, like, <laughs> I, I'm sure they listen to some people. There were a lot of complaints. We're, yeah, we're no, not was, the only ones like going on about this. And most people, I will say this. I mean, most people still like the show. I mean, if you look at the yeah. the Rotten Tomatoes, it's still at a hundred percent. I mean, then that's that's a rare thing for for a show yeah, to right. get to, to be at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So, uh, it, even if people were annoyed by the split in the season, it's still like I said, it still was a really really good season. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get into that. Let's rate this thing uh, the, here on the Main Attraction Podcast. Whenever we cover a season of a television show, we always end up rating it at the end. At the top of our list is a succession. Beneath the succession is a lost. Middle of the road horse is friends. Uh, beneath friends is a full house. And bottom of the barrel horse is a Baywatch. What are you rating the second season? Or I guess just uh, the first two seasons combined of, of Invincible. Ooh. I forgot we did the first two seasons. First season yeah, we, is succession. Easily, yeah. The, the first half is a succession. Right. The second half is a loss. I right. mean, I guess I got to go to succession, but I, if we had just gone by season two alone, I would have gone to a loss. But if I'm, I'm keeping going it, all overall, I would uh, still be a succession. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with a succession still. And when I look back on this thing, like I said, I don't think the show needs to – I don't want to – I don't want to deem the show for a network or for a creator or for a creator decision just about like how the show is delivered to you. I, yeah. I, it's easy to do uh, because of the fact that when you're watching something, it's easy, you're basically judging how you feel about it, how you're enjoying it, how you're not enjoying it in the, in the moment there. But it's not the show's fault. The show itself, it's not its fault for the the break it's that's right. the, the you know the show is what it is it, the the how it was written how it was made it was all the it was everybody else's decision that had nothing either might have had something to do with it but the show itself i think is still good because like i said when i went back and thought about just what they were trying to do in this entire thing i thought they accomplished what they wanted it's just yeah. the problem is and like i said i'll be really interested to see what the reaction to this finale is when it comes out on thursday of next week when that comes out, if people are saying what you and I, what you were saying, and what I thought initially before I went back and thought about it, so is this like what was the point? Why are they, why are we doing the ancient stuff? I, I like I said, if they if you had done this all consecutively, if Prime Video had done their normal release three the first three episodes first, then the next four weeks they do uh, the next the next five weeks they do the next five episodes. I don't think people would be. I, I definitely would not have said that because I would have remembered it. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, think you would have sure. said it either, but yeah. I'll be really interested to see what the reception is. But like I said, I don't think that's the actual show's issue, so I'm trying to judge it on the actual show itself. And so I'm still giving it a succession. So. All right. Uh, before we sign off, we are going to give some of our listeners some things that we're looking forward to. What are some things you're looking forward to? Uh, the Paramount Plus uh, Showtime show, A Gentleman in Moscow. Okay. It's, it's uh, starring Ewan McGregor. It's oh, okay. uh, based on a book that came out a couple of years ago. My wife loved this book, by the way. And uh, <laughs> it's it's about a writer in like 1910s Russia that has written about the revolution and the, the Kremlin blames him and they make him stay in a hotel for the okay. rest of his life. So it's supposed to be a really great series. And Ewan McGregor is a star. And it starts, uh, I think, uh, tonight uh, on... March 29th. So, okay. uh, 
gentlemen in what? Moscow. They have big hopes for it. And what network is it on? What Paramount streaming service? Plus. Plus, okay. Uh, for me, I've got one as well. Uh, it actually released today. I hadn't heard of it. It looked good though, uh, so I'll be re- really interested to see what it comes what it comes about. Uh, uh, it's on Disney Plus. It's called Renegade Nell. Uh, it like takes place in like I guess the, like the 1500s or something like that. But uh, I don't know. It looks it looks interesting. It looks like a uh, woman who's like kind of like trying to like get revenge or something. I don't really know. Like I said, I just saw the I saw a quick trailer of it because I saw I got an email about it saying uh, you should go watch it. But uh, it looks good. I'm looking forward to it. So I'll give that a I'll give that a spin hopefully over this weekend and see how I'm not sure if it's weekly or I think it's weekly actually. So I'll check out episode one this week and see what uh, it's like. And another uh, I saw where shrinking season two is filming. Oh really and Brett Goldstein confirmed as cast yes. member. And he's one of the writers of the season yeah, he's one. one so. Of the writers, so he's confirmed as a cast member for season two. Oh, awesome. Very excited about that news. Yeah, that, that'll be fun. Uh, that was a really good show. One, If there was a show that I wish we had covered, it, that would be one of the ones yeah. I wish we had covered yeah, in definitely. the first season. So, All right. Uh, I guess that kind of wraps us up for our coverage of Invincible season two. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before we sign off? Yeah, appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I will echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.